Hi everyone, my name is Danilla Simon and I'm a tutor with Czech Tutors. I tutor a wide range of subjects including math, physics, and English writing. So today we're going to talk about critical points, which is a very important concept in calculus. Critical points are basically wherever the function's derivative equals zero or it does not exist. So D and E denotes that. It says does not exist. It's a shorthand for that. So examples of where critical points uh, would occur include maximums, minimums, discontinuities, a corner, or an inflection. So a maximum, a minimum, and an inflection would be where the derivative equals zero. And so a discontinuity is a very good example of where it does not exist. So you know how when a function has a maximum, it, the derivative increases, 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 and at that very point where it's at the maximum, it, uh, it equals zero because there's no change occurring at that certain point where it reaches its peak. It's the same thing for minimum. And so for discontinuity, the derivative cannot exist at that point because the function jumps. So um, let's figure out how we can calculate the critical points. So there are three steps to calculating any critical point if you are given the function. So you can calculate the derivative of the function first. Then you can simplify or factor it as necessary. And then set it equal to 0 and solve for the zeros. So let's do an example and see how that would look. So I've set up this problem here. Our function is x cubed plus 2x squared plus 4. So the first step, let's go back to calculating the critical points, is calculate the derivative of the function. So let's find out the derivative. So if you already know how to calculate the derivative, this should be easy. So you take down the power, so you have 3x, and then the x power gets subtracted by 1, so you get 3x squared, and plus uh, the 2 multiplies down with the coefficient, so we have 4x, and since the power of 2 minus 1 is just 1, we leave the x there, and since 4 is a constant, you don't do anything, and that becomes 0. So this is your derivative, basically. Now we've done the first step, we have calculated the derivative of the function. The second step is to simplify or factor if necessary. So this is just a step that we can add to make our life easier when we're trying to calculate critical points. Um, it doesn't really matter whether or not you choose to do this, but if you do it, it's much easier to calculate. So over here, we see that we have a common factor of x in both of these terms, so we can bring that out. So we can say this equals x times 3x plus 4. You may see now how simple it would be to calculate the zeros of this, of this new factored out version of the derivative. So we've simplified and there's nothing else that could go out of the parentheses. There's no common term between 3x and 4. So now we set equal to 0 and solve. So if we set this equal to 0, instead of doing that, we can set each of these factors equal to 0. So let's set x equal 0. So we already found one of our solutions, or critical points, is when x equals 0. Our second critical point would be when we put this whole term equal to 0. So let's do that. 3x plus 4 equals 0. Now pardon my handwriting. Um, 3x plus 4 equals 0. So now what we have to do is try to solve for x. So let's try doing that. So the first step in doing that would be, of course, subtracting the 4 over. So we have 3x equals negative 4. And then to get the x by itself, we divide both sides by 3, and this 3 cancels out. So we get negative 4 over 3 as our x. So now that we have two things that equal x, we can say these are our two critical points. x equals 0 and x equals negative 4 over 3. We have completed all the three steps, and that's our answer when we are asked to find the critical point. So we saw before that critical points could mean that the function has a maximum or a minimum or a discontinuity or something like that. So there is a way to calculate and figure out what this critical point means. So, is a critical point a local max or a local min? It's very easy to find out whether or not the critical point that we found is 
a minimum or a maximum in the function. So the step to doing that is find the second derivative, plug in the critical point. And so once you plug in the critical point, if the value ends up becoming positive, that means the function is unchanging. That means that we have a ma minimum at that point. If we get a negative value, that means the function is decreasing, and that means we have a maximum. So what does this mean? So when you're taking the second derivative, you're basically taking the derivative of the derivative. I know that's kind of confusing to sound at first. If you think about it, it really does make sense because if you look at the second derivative and it's positive, that means the function is increasing or the derivative is increasing as well. So that means that um, we have reached the minimum point and from there onwards, the, fun the function is going to be a positive one. So um, that means we have a minimum. If we have a maximum, the function is decreasing or the second derivative is negative. So the second derivative being negative would mean that the derivative is decreasing. So if the derivative is decreasing, that means that we're going down from our maximum point. So that's what that denotes. In general, that confuse you a lot because it's, it's very simple once you play around with it. So let's go back to our original function that we did before and take that over here and try to find out whether or not our critical point is where it is right now for real time. So let's write down the critical point we got. We got x is a 0. And we also had x equals 0 4 over 2. So let's look at our steps. First, let's find the second derivative. first derivative. Now, to calculate the second derivative, all you have to do is take the derivative of the derivative. So we're trying to do take the derivative of this in the function. So like we did before, we take down the power and multiply it by the coefficient. And then the power gets subtracted by second derivative. Now that we have our second derivative, let's see what we have to do. We have to plug in our critical point into the second derivative. So let's do it one by one. So let's plug in x equals 0 first. Now, x equals 0, we first find the second derivative, which we took from 0. from 0, 0, and then we just have a positive 0. So that becomes 4. Now let's plug in um, the second value of x, which is negative 4 over 2. So we plug that in for x, so we have 6 times negative 4 over 2, because that's where x goes. That's 4. Now we know that 6 and 3 can cancel out. plus negative 4 becomes negative 8, and then we have plus 4 coming out over here, sorry, <laughs> alright, and now we have negative 8 plus 4, and negative 8 plus 4 is of course negative 4. So we have two values that are 0. When we plug in one of the critical points we got a positive 4, when we plug in the second critical point, we got a negative 4. So what does this mean? This means that if we get a positive value, that's the place where it has a minimum. So wherever this positive 4 occurs is where this function has a minimum. So we can say that this is our min. Or the point where x equals 0 is the point where the minimum has occurred. And also, wherever we get a negative value, that means the function is decreasing, that means we are going down from our maximum point, that means that this negative 4
Lord will be all you have. Amen. So that's the basics of spiritual signs and how you can figure out whether or not they're a local means of action or they're a tool. So the main points to remember is that church attendance at one of the day leaders is zero or it does not exist. Of course, the Catholic Church is saying to give this to the leaders and to the individuals. And then, of course, to find a suitable time. If you want to know whether or not there are a local mass or means, you just have to take the second day leader, that is the day leaders at the day leader, <laughs> and um, put his presence or a church attendance at that and take that test. And that should tell you whether or not the church attends on local meetings or local mass. This is the basics of church attendance. If you have any other questions, feel free to contact me on chat. Otherwise, thank you for watching and have a great day.